Hi and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to start doing a series of um, 3D CAD design. So in the past I've shown SolidWorks and the design process and how we 3D print parts from that. And I appreciate that, I mean, you know, not everybody's got access to SolidWorks. You know, <laughs> I've been a draftsman and in, in an engineering environment for 23 years now. And I've used pretty much every CAD package that's out there. So, you know, it, it is pretty unfair to, to show only industry CAD packages. So what I've done is I've downloaded a copy of Autodesk 123D Design because it's free and anybody can get it. Um, I've used it for about 20 minutes and it's not like a CAD package that I've used in the past. So it's going to be a little bit of an interesting journey this, but we're going to learn it together. Um, we're going to design parts with 3D printing in mind and um, we're going to learn pretty pretty much the design process how the software works and and pretty much so you can make what whatever you want with with your printer basically so what we'll do in this video is we'll start with some pretty basic shapes um to kick the design process off you really need to know what you want to make so what i'm going to do is i've looked on thingiverse and i've searched other places and as all good youtubers know you need to have an audio source here and a video source there and you need to synchronize the audio and the video together so you have some kind of means of making a noise people often just like clap or something like that but i mean we all know we've seen in in the film industry they have a clapperboard which is kind of like a, a thing with a, a lever on and what i'm going to do is i'm going to design and i'm going to print out a clapperboard that i can use to synchronize my audio so this video will be purely the design process in future videos we'll do the pros and cons of printing out big flat things and, and we'll see how well we get on so that's enough of my talking about this we'll shrink this window down we'll bring up autocad 123d design and we'll get started right so this is the main 123d design screen um we have a menu across the top i'm going to call this the actions menu that's i have no idea what they call it but that's what i'm calling it because this is where kind of like the action takes place and down here on the right hand side we have kind of like a view related menu so i'm going to call that the view menu and we have a cube here that you can grab a hold of and spin around and the screen moves um just to bear in mind at the minute there's a drop down menu here and i have switched perspective to orthographic it's just so that everything lines up with the grid it's the way i've worked for years this perspective view kind of freaks me out i'll show you later on what it does but we'll get started now now what we're going to do is we're only going to look at primitives we're not going to look at sketches we're not going to look at drawn things we're just going to look at primitives and primitive shapes you've got a choice of five and we can bring these in and we can stretch them modify them add them together subtract them from each other and we can make stuff so we're going to make a clapperboard so i'm going to start with a box ah th th there's my box right okay some of the controls just to go through the right mouse button rotates the screen the middle mouse button pans the screen and rolling the wheel zo zooms the screen right and for some reason this is zero so i'm going to keep it at the bottom corner and i'm actually going to view yeah that that that, that well, well we'll go that way so you can see that's better so zeros over there okay so right my printer is 200 cube so i probably want to do a width of 150 um a length of probably 100 and a, a height what i'm going to do with this is i'm going to do with a height of five and i'm going to print out two and i'm going to glue them back to back so you get a thickness of 10 but you don't have to print out 10 thick you know and i want the the white markings or the chevrons or whatever you call them i want it to be on both sides so if i make one then we can load it into the slicer and flip it and then print it and we don't we only have to make one so as you can see that's the size of the part we want and down here it says snap one units millimeters and as you can see it's kind of jumping around so it is locked to the grid and if there's one thing i've learned about this program the grid is your friend so i've dumped that down there that's that's pretty cool so we're going to have another box and i'm going to have it was uh, 150 wide it was five thick and i'm going to have this one 20 high and i'm going to put it out of the way a little but that's going to be the arm 
of 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 the clapperboard and and that's it we're done great <laughs> no not yet not quite but that's going to be the shape of it and we're going to have a hinge mechanism at this side so to make a hinge mechanism we probably want it to be nice and flush so if i click on a part down here you get this kind of like i'm going to call this a modifiers menu again i don't know what they call it i don't know what autodesk call it i'm calling it the modifiers menu and i'm going to click move and then you get this cool graphic here which allows you to move things on the grid which is important and it allows you to if you click on various ones you can spin them around and you can rotate them in either direction so i've just moved them so that they line up together and what i'm going to do now is i'm going to create another box yeah that's a bit big so that's 20 thick let's say yeah let's say 40 40 high yeah that's pretty good and it wants to be yeah 20 wide and let's make it uh, we are five thick so we want to, yeah, let's make it two so we leave three behind now when you try and place something on here it snaps to the grid when you try and place something on here it doesn't snap to the grid it, it moves wherever the hell it wants unless you point roughly to the center and then it locks to the middle so what i'm going to do is i'm going to move that off and i'm going to lock it to the grid i'm also going to control v control c control v yeah control v control c and i'm going to move that up so we've got two of those the the it'll become evident in a sec why we've got two but if i get a hold of this and move it is that, is that forwards or is that sideways why is it five milli the grid the, sorry the snap on this thing seems to depend on there now it's one millimeter it depends on how close you zoomed in so we move that three millimeters up and then we move it in to line that line up and up to line that line up that's it so that's kind of where the hinge is going to be but what we've got here now is we've got three parts that all overlap and we need to get rid of that so up here in the combine menu there's a command called subtract now if you hit subtract it says you can take two parts away from each other so we want to keep this part but we want to remove no no we want to remove this part from it and now you can see we've got two millimeters 20 mil square removed from there and the reason i had this one is because i'm going to move it forwards and i'm going to move it in place and i'm going to subtract that one from this top piece so there we've got a nice recess in the top and and that's it there, there you go that's where the hinge is going to sit somehow so that looks pretty cool right let's just move this out of the way of course what we're going to need because it's a hinge it's going to need a curved surface so if we go to the modify menu and the fillet we can click this edge and then we can type in this box down here or we can drag this arrow till the number says yeah something like 10 10 and a half 10 will do and now we've got a curved surface for it to kind of turn on you know what i mean so that's pretty good <laughs> so now what we need is a hole we need a hole for this to pivot on so if we go back to our primitives we've got a cylinder and if i make the radius of the cylinder 5.5 so that's that's going to be 11 millimeters diameter now there's a reason for 11 millimeters and i'll explain that in a sec and i'm going to put it on the grid i'm going to put it at that point on the grid and then i'm going to modify it move it down so that it's definitely through the part and if i click top so that it lines up and then i'll line it there so that's five that's to the corner so i want to come down 10 and i want to go in 10 and that's going to be a hole eventually right so we do the subtracting again we keep that bit we take that bit from it and we've now got an 11 millimeter diameter hole makes sense so now we need a piece which we can glue into this square and it'll sit against this square with a pin in to sit in the hole so we'll start with a box again um our recess was two so we make it too thick and it was 20 wide and it was 40 high 
Right, and then we'll... Yeah, it does kind of crazy things if you try pointing at stuff. So we'll just work with a grid for now. That's the easiest way. We put it down there. And then this part here is three thick. So we need a pin three thick. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to a cylinder. Um, it, it really just needs to be five. So that makes the pin 10 and the hole 11. Due to the 3D printing process, holes come out slightly smaller and pins come out slightly bigger. So I worked it out if we have a millimeter difference in the diameter, they fit and they move. They don't kind of like bind up or anything like that. So that's why we've gone for an 11 millimeter hole and a 10 millimeter pin. Right, and I'm going to put that on the grid. And I'm going to modify that. And I'm going to move it um, up two millimeters so that it's now on that face. Yeah, there we go. And then I've now got, oh, yeah, let's view the top again. Right. Right, let's get this. Right, so that's where it's going to be, and it needs to be 10 down and 10 in. Okay. But it's it's 100 million miles too long. So what I've discovered is if you click on, a, on, a, on an item, and then as you move across the item, it highlights different things. So we can highlight this face on the end, or we can highlight that edge. So if we highlight that face, and then we click this cog, and we get the tweak menu. Now you may think, that looks exactly the same as the move menu. Well, it is, but what we're doing is we're modifying that face only. So that's one millimetre thick there. So we want to go to three, so that's two, and that's three. Sometimes the measurements kind of do weird things and it's not good. <laughs> but, you know, it's free, so we'll, we'll use it. Right, so you think to yourself, great, we've got a plate with a pin on but they're two separate items. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go up to the combine menu and we're going to merge that part and that part, hit return. And now you can see when you point at this, it's one item. And that's that's pretty much all we need. That That is our clatterboard. So if I click this now and modify it and then rotate it 180, 180. Yep, and then if I drag it into position, and then I click this and modify it and drag that into position. We can see now that that is our our clapperboard. This curve is going to allow that to curve up, and that this that that square section is not going to allow that to curve, is it? Right. So let's uh, let's move that to there, and let's put a fillet on this edge, and we'll put a ten. You can just type the numbers in. There we go. Right, so that's that's that. And then if we move that back into position, there we go. Right, so now that curve is going to allow that to travel, and that curve is going to allow that to travel. So that's pretty cool. But that's that's not really cool, is it? I can't quite see what's going on. What we need is we need some markings on this, because clatterboards have chevrons on. And what I decided to do was I'm going to print this in black ABS. But it would be really cool if the chevrons were in white. But how do you do that with the 3D printer? Well, you don't want to paint them and you don't want to stick them on with tape and things. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to disassemble this. I'm just going to move that up out the way and I'm going to move this out the way. Right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to print these. If you imagine the grid is the print bed. I'm going to kind of go and print it like this. So this face here and this face here will be the finished top face. And the back face will be the glue surface for the other side of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a raised section on here of the chevrons. And basically, as it prints, when it starts to print, when it, yeah, when it starts to print the chevrons, this face, this top face will be finished. And what I can do is I can pause the printer and then... I can change the filament from black to white, resume the print, and it'll print the chevrons in white. That's the plan. Whether it works or not, I don't know, but that's the plan. So what we need is we need some chevrons on here. We need them to be raised up. So if we go back to the top view and we put a primitive box. Yeah, a box is not a very chevrony shape. Right, we need the height to be mm, two millimeters. Yeah, two, two millimeters would be okay. And we, we'll reduce the, the width to 10. 
and we dump it on the grid. Right, that, that's that's not looking. Click that. That's not looking too bad, but it's definitely not a chevron shape. Right, what I want to do is I'm going to copy and paste it because we're going to need a one for the top as well. Copy and paste it while we've got it. So, what happened there? That's better. Right, so if I click that face and then tweak it, I can move that back 10 millimeters. Hmm, that's, not, that's okay. Now, what if I do that face? back 10 millimeters 79 that is starting to look that's starting to look pretty good right so let's move this move it up five four five and move it in till the edge touches do the same with this one while we're on move it up five 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 there we go and in till the oh oh yeah that we we moved that out the way didn't we is that is that not on the grid anymore? It doesn't it doesn't look like it's on the grid anymore. But it might be. Let's just secure a top view. Yeah, it is. Right, so Yeah, there we go. That's it. That's it there. Right. So we've got a chevron. Yay! What we need now is more. So we could copy and paste them and manually position them or we could create new ones. But this thing comes with uh, pattern tools up on the actions menu. So if you click the part you want to pattern and then you say a pattern menu, you can do rectangular, circular. And so. We're going to do rectangular and it says, what do you want to pattern and what direction do you want to pattern it? What, what do you mean direction? Well, it's just an edge. Just click an edge and then drag and you're there. So we've got the top view. And we'll just line this edge up. Right, so we've now got three, but three doesn't look like enough. So we'll we'll put four, five. Yeah, six looks better. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, so we'll do the same again. So we select our object. We go to rectangular pattern. We select our direction. And then we drag. And we go to the top view. Oh yeah, that would hit that pretty good. And we put six in. And there's there's the chevron. So as the print grows, these will end up being white. Hopefully. But there's a, a line down here, and as you can see, we can select these individually. So they're all separate items still. So what we need to do finally is we need to merge them. So if we merge that with that, 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 and that, hit return, you'll see the line disappears. And that now means they're all joined together. So we need to do that with the top. Merge. Let's try that again. Let's merge that with that, 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 that. That's better. And now the lines are all on, on the, disappeared. So that's all one part. Once you've merged a part, you have to use undo to undo it. So you can't kind of like go in and rip it up. You've got to chop it out and, and do it again but we're not worried about that at the minute this is very basic we're just using primitives to draw what we want and now finally i'm going to move this back to there and this back to here is that it and that is going to be our clapperboard well that's going to be half of our clapperboard you know what i mean uh, i'm not going to draw the mirrored half of it here because it's easier to do that in the slicer software. You can just load in a model and, and slice it. Yeah, that's that's looking pretty good. Quite pleased with that. Right, stop moving that. Right. So now we need to figure out how we get this out to the to the 3D printer. Now the easiest way I've discovered with this is if you just click the part and then you press this export selection button and then you change the file type to STL, give it a name and hit save and what that does is that allows you to okay, that allows you to click on any individual part and and just export that individual part as an stl file there is an option up here which says um export stl i don't know how that works because that's going to try and do the entire screen as an stl file i think and i don't know whether that means the printer will try and create it as one item so i would just click the part click export selection select stl and you're good to go. 
So that's pretty much it for primitives. They're very simple. I mean, we haven't covered half of what this software can do, even a tiny bit of what this software can do. I don't think. I know about as much as you at the minute. But that is how I'm going to use this software to design something to work on my 3D printer. And, you know, you can do the same. You can take primitives and you can modify them and you can change their shape and you can tweak them and you can do whatever you want and you can come up with something that's going to be pretty cool. So if you've got any questions about the software, any questions about the design, just as usual, just leave them all in the comments and I'll get to them when I can. But uh, I'm going to leave this video here. Hopefully in the next section, we're going to get on to see some 3D printing and in the, the section after that, we'll get on to do some assembly and some, some acetone welding, hopefully, depending on how well these print out. So as usual, please like, comment, subscribe. I've been Steve. Thanks for listening.